welcome on into Drinks with Binks. Of course, as always, I'm Julie Stewart Binks here with you, sipping, drinking, talking, doing whatever we want to do on the show here today. And we are so excited to have the stars of the new hit series, Boxer Wives, with us here today. Of course, f pro boxer. We've got Zab Judah here with us, as well as executive producer and star of the show, Mita Leacock. Thank you guys so much for being with us here today. We know we're going to sip some drinks. We're going to talk about everything, your different careers. And you've been going around talking about Boxer Wives. How's it been? It's um, it's actually been kind of good. We've gotten a lot of great feedback on it. You know, everyone's number one question is, you know, exes. <laughs> yeah. How are you guys doing this together? But um, we've got a lot of great feedback. I think a lot of people are anticipating more. Yeah, that's it's fantastic. I mean, mm -hmm. so many different elements with the show, and and we want to talk with you, Zab. You yeah. know, former six time world champion, your yeah. boxing career, and what's going on now. But before we get into everything, we drink on this show. We get a little tipsy mm. as uh, Mita's already getting into the sauce over there. <laughs> my sauce girl, right after saucy. my own heart. Uh, <laughs> but what do we got? Okay, so we got you pick the drink. What um, do we have? Yeah, so we have Don Julio mm -hmm. mixed with ginger ale. Which is something I had never heard of before. <laughs> so tell me back. Tell me how it's, you came up with this It's a gin one. Julio. It's a gin Julio. <laughs> gin Julio. Okay. So um, I love ginger ale. Yes. And I love tequila. And I was thinking, you know, pineapple juice. I usually do pineapple juice, but that has a lot of sugar in mm -hmm. it. Cranberry juice sometimes. Orange juice. I'm like, mm, let me try something light. Different. And refreshing. Yes. It's kind of a refreshing It's very drink. refreshing. Yes. And if you have an upset stomach, too, it makes it, you feel it, good, it, right? It kills two birds with yeah. one stone. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, bird. But yeah. <laughs> this is the future. And we didn't know, you didn't know if we were going to be drinking this together. It was just no. sort of like you thought it. was like of a it. chaser type of a thing. A chaser, that's what you're thinking. Yeah. Okay. Well, we went ahead and put them together. I see. And you know what? We're just going to go with it. Yes. Because YOLO, good. whatever. YOLO. And we can always change the drink if we want. But they must say, you got to try these chips. They're yeah, good. chips. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because we don't want people to get super <laughs> smashed on the show, at least like just for optics. It's like right. there's food here. Right. Just in we case. We gave you food. We gave you food. So when you walk out of here, <laughs> right. uh, you know, no you're good. not going to be puking on the street, hopefully. Yeah. Right. Um, but what we like to do on the show, we drink mm -hmm. and we like to go anywhere in the world so where did you guys pick that you wanted to go oh man well you know oh normally okay. we I'm, would have picked like right. turks and caicos or greece yeah, or greece something like that but, you know but what? for some reason Just keep it local mgm you know what no, no no you know what we can't find our passports so we're gonna yeah. keep it local so Vegas. we're gonna yeah we're gonna go to the, one of my favorite places we're going to mgm mgm yeah, one of my favorite places. right to the ring i Let's love go. the mgm grand look at it's this amazing man. <laughs> Who cares if you lost I'm, your passport? I'm at Vegas, home. Vegas, baby. I'm Vegas, at home baby. right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, this is awesome stuff. All right, well, let's oh, let's, let's toast. toast, guys. Here we go. Cheers. Bing. Thanks so much for Bing. coming here to the show. It, this, you know, this just setup isn't really great for drinking and, and talking, but you know what? We're doing everything we can here on the show. Okay, so what do you guys think? Refreshing. Mm. Real tequila, too. This is mm -hmm. good stuff. It's good oh, we stuff. Don't mess, we don't out on this show, okay? <laughs> I don't know if you've seen my bar cart over here, okay? It's good stuff this here. Like, this says my name on it. Yeah, it's not, it's not I'm watered down like the club. Putting my logo Hold on. on everything. Hold on, we need a little Ducey up here. Uh, yeah, if, Ducey. I do I say so myself. Yeah, 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 I love Ducey. So it's great. So we yeah, we're, we're big. <laughs> Any brand that wants to, and even to just give. send us the booze, yeah, we the will rock. put it on here today. Right. Um, but what would you guys like to toast to? Because there's a lot of great things going on in your lives. Um, Mito, we'll start with you. What's what's good going on? I would like to toast to health, strength, and that check at the end of the oh, rainbow. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gotta get that cheddar. That pot of gold yes. at the end of the that rainbow. Was, cheers Close to that. To that yeah. so live, live in, living our best lives yes. in 2020. Exactly. Mm. And Zab, what are what are you toasting to? What are what's good going on in your life? Um, it's a lot. Of, I have a lot of great things going on right now. You know, one of the most things is my biggest thing is Box's wife right now. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I'm just happy to to be able to be in a comfortable environment with you know what I'm saying my ex-wife and see my children doing great and blossoming well and. I'm just happy to that. Yeah. So toast to that. Cheers. That's <laughs> that's an incredible feat. Just yes. like being in a comfortable yes. environment with my ex-wife mm -hmm. is like a unique that's sentence, good. right? Yeah. Because, right? Because yeah. because you know usually you'll just drink a whole bottle to the head having to deal with this. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But we're drinking comfortably. We're comfortable. Yeah. Right. Oh, look. 
fuck you guys are like, this is like amazing so many people my parents included would take a lot of lessons from being around yeah. one another in such yeah. a great environment and uh, there's so many things I want to talk to you about with the show with mm-hmm. your career with your career as well mm-hmm. obviously Mita but Let's just talk about this dynamic. Like, yeah. what's it like working with and just being with your ex the whole time? You know what? Let me go for it. You know what I'm saying? At, at first, when it first came about and it first started, I said, no, no way. There's no way we would ever be. They said, yo, you and me, to, nope, me and me to can't do a show. I said, the, but then as dynamics went on and we, you know what I'm saying, we came apart and we started working, we started to see some of the old familiar ways start to come back around again. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. wow. You know what I'm saying? We we fit comfortably, and we just made it happen. Amito, for you, what was it? What's it like? Um, you want the the real answer? Yeah, honey, <laughs> right, we got out, we got booze here. My answer was real. <laughs> <laughs> it really came out of my mouth. <laughs> no, um, it's 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 bittersweet. Um, you know, it's I'm happy that time had to go by for us to get to this point. Definitely, you know, everybody had to mature, and. Um, feelings and emotions and everything that we went through had to sail away in the Mm -hmm. ship. You know what I'm saying? So we're in a much better place. You know, we want what's best for each other. Um, And so I think I love the fact that we're willing to help each other still at this day and age Mm -hmm. realize each other's goals and dreams. Yeah, I mean, it's a great collaboration between both of your industries. Now, you you know, he's, he's still a bit of a hothead. You know, so there are some days where I want to, like, choke the shit yeah, out of yeah. him, You're right? Like, I'm so glad <laughs> right? we're divorced. Right, yeah. like, m- like, my nigga, my nigga. Okay. <laughs> so, um, he, he, you know, he goes black sometimes, and, you know, you got to, like... Yeah, you well, know, Mon- Monaco is a great place to visit too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Zab, you know, you mentioned that when the idea originally came to you to work with me, that you were like, no, 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 no. no. I don't mean no. I mean that when it came about in my head, I was like, how is this gonna right. work out? Like, you know what I mean? Well, like, how, what were you guys like at that point? No, I mean, ten years ago we started this. Okay. Yeah, but you know what? I must say, even throughout our divorce. And maybe I would say the first year of the divorce, it was a little bit, it was like, like I don't like her, don't mm-hmm. come around me, I'm going, you know, but after that, I was like, come on, like, what are you talking about? Like, move on, like, that's still, I, we, we have a child together. So that's what, I think that was the biggest right. thing that kept us like, and we both, we love our child to death, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? We have, you know what I mean, mutual love for her, and you know, so that's what kept everything, you know what I'm saying, afloat. Mm-hmm. And the fact that I, you know, still take care of his whole life. Yeah, yeah uh, I mean, that's the big point. There, some things too. never stop. You know? What do you mean? Just but at least divorced. you're benefiting from it now. Yeah, that just, check is coming in for both of you guys. Because you divorced doesn't mean you gotta stop taking care of situations. Well, Let's go. I mean, usually, yeah. But yeah. now it's working for both of you guys, yeah. and we're gonna talk more about the show and about both of their careers coming up next on Drinks with Thanks. Welcome on back to Drinks with Thinks. I'm JSB, and I'm so thrilled to be joined by two very impressive guests. We've got former six-time world champion, Zab, Ju- Zab Judah, and as well, as I just found out, Dr. Mita Leacock, yeah. because she has done everything right now. <laughs> uh, and she's executive producer and star of Boxer Wives, as well as Zab is on there, too. And before, by you know, the way, I'm, we, I'm a producer. You keep it You're a producer, yes. <laughs> I, know, guys, I, I know she's I'm an EP, but I am a li- I'm the little P. Hey, you know what? We give credit to every different person on the show as we do on our show here. Um, you know, it takes a lot of work to put yeah. on a show. Yeah. And um, it takes also to be in the right headspace, the right mentality. And I know, Zab, you were talking about like when you fought last yeah. in June and kind of everything that you've gone through to this point. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling right now? Um, I'm okay right now. I mean, I'm not 100%, but I'm okay. You know, after my last fight, it was a bit of a scare to the world. Um, I was, uh, I, fought, I fought a guy that was uh, on PEDs, or, um, he was uh, enhanced, okay. I should say. And, um, it, you know, during the fight, you know, because I was taking some shots, it forced me to go into a coma. And I was in a coma for a bit of a days. And then in July, I had brain surgery. And I'm not even six months out right now, but I'm doing great. 
Wow, that's, that's God is amazing. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, congratulations yes. for just being able to, you know, go through such a traumatic experience yeah. and be able to be, be coherent. sitting yeah, yeah coherent yeah. sitting here right now. What like I mean, what is that what's it like to go through all that? Um, like I said, um most I was the greatest because through it all I didn't feel no pain. Mm-hmm. Even still to this day. It's no pain. I mean, it was a lot of worries. You know, when I got up, the family, everybody, it was. I looked at my phone. I mean, reading my messages was more detrimental than <laughs> what I went through. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I didn't feel no pain. You know what I mean? So when I read my message, I'm like, oh, my yeah. God. Like, people are like, <laughs> like, are have you there? Have you seen like, footage of it? Yes. I have my uh, surgery um, fully taped, and, and I've watched it back maybe a hundred times already. And I've seen it. I have uh, I have a documentary that I'm putting together as well right, right now, and in the documentary, when it comes out, you'll see from my doctor, he tells everything. And it's it's a little bit deeper than what people have seen and mm-hmm. know about. Wow, okay. And Mita, what was what was it like for you seeing this happen? Um, I was in Atlanta when I got the call. I mean, I had went to the fight, and I know that, you know, he had a little bit of issues, but he got out the hospital, and then I got the call that he went back in the hospital. And I came, you know, immediately back to New York. Because, um, you know, at the end of the day, he's family Mm -hmm. and he's my daughter's family. So, you know, we wanted to be by his side to make sure that um, everything was good. And when we got there, he had just came out of surgery and he was ready to hit the streets. It sounds just like business as usual. (laughs) Just classic everyday brain surgery. he He literally came outside with me with his gown on, carrying his wet bag or whatever he was, his anesthesia, whatever it was on the stick. He came downstairs like that. Wow. I mean, that's not that's not normal. <laughs> hmm. No, no shoes on. Many years. Had to give him my slippers. Well, I, had a lot, I had a lot of fun. Though. I mean, you know what? He I, wanted you wanted pizza. You know what it was? I'm a person that you know when I woke up in a situation, it was very bad and detrimental to my health. So, I woke up in the ICU, and you know the first thing I woke up, I seen wires. I saw snatching the wires out, getting up like what, what's going on, and you know what I'm saying so. After a couple of days of me getting settled in, and I'm, you know, I'm like, okay, I can move around. Mm-hmm. I get up, I walk, and I see the person next door to me. He's on life support. Mm-hmm. The person to the right of me, he's on life support. I'm like, oh no, 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 I gotta get out of here. Right. <laughs> so I go downstairs, and I will walk around. I, will, I mean, people that remember my time from the hospital in Brooklyn Hospital, they remember me walking around the hospital, going into other parts of the hospital, mm-hmm. and they like, champ, you can't. You can't just walk around here like this. Right. And I'm like, well, I can go sit in the cafeteria, right, and get something to eat. And I was like, mm, not really. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, Well, you mentioned that you're not feeling 100% right now. What? Well, no, I don't mean not feeling 100%. I mean, like, am I 100% from well than, as I should be? No. I, I had brain surgery less than six months ago. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, I'm not going to be 100%, but... I'm better than a normal. Yeah, and, and he gets to use it as an excuse now. Yeah, if you forget yeah. something, anything yeah. that yes, he forgets, yes. he'd be like, I, "I had brain surgery." You're like, "Come on, ever. like, you know, <laughs> yes. that's me forever. Back. That's his ongoing thing right. now." I had brain surgery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to take out the trash. It drives me insane now. <laughs> I bet. And Zeb, I've had, uh, I had a friend who had uh, multiple brain surgeries, oh. and I saw different, you know, things change with them. Mm-hmm. What have you noticed that has changed about you after having gone through that? Well, since I went through my brain surgery, I've noticed that um, now I'm on television doing a box of wife television show, and it's going successful, and I'm very happy. And I'm just like, <laughs> you're like, I woke up and I'm a ra- yeah. reality TV star. Yeah, yeah. If I knew it would have been like this, I'd have been had this already. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Why well, wait 25 oh, years yeah, of boxing? Like, I've been started and, this. And again, he doesn't have to be held accountable to anything yeah. ever in life again. Yeah. <laughs> I had brain surgery. Well, it is fascinating because <laughs> the brain, obviously, it's, you know, it's plastic, it's changing, it's finding yeah. ner- new neurological yeah. pathways. So yeah. I'm sure with that, too, yeah. you're you're still, you're figuring uh, out a new reality in a way. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Now, in terms of your career in the ring, like, after you go through an experience like this, how much does it sort of, you know, juxtapose your, like, it kind of takes, it, it almost, like, puts... It, in comparison, your values and your goals and, like, what you want as a person when you go through something as traumatic as brain surgery. Like, when did you when did you sort of realize, like, maybe maybe the time's coming to an end being in the ring? Um, no, never. Never. I, I've, I, you know, I'm a fighter. From the age of six years old to the age of 41 years old, that's been the length of my career. 
You know what I'm saying? In between, it's been nothing. I've never, I mean, set, I've never had a job. I've never worked. I've never done anything else but box. And boxing business, you know what I mean? So, you know, when the time came that I, and I went through my situation and we looked back and evaluated my, you know, God bring me through this. So when I went back and evaluated, I went through 25 years of this, of professional boxing. If I add up amateur career with it, it's more than 30 Five years, you know what I mean, of 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 of, of competing as an athlete. I figured that, that was it. There's nothing stopping me. My doctor had cleared me, said I'm good. I can go back in the ring if I if I wanted to. Mm. But after 25 years of 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 what I went through and just a little bit of last stuff of what I went through, I understand that God got a better plan for me. I'm still here, and you know, reality TV is where I'll be. <laughs> so yeah. So are you then? Have you closed the door on going back to yes, box? Yes. Yes. I retired. Yeah. Yes. yeah you officially I'm, retired. I'm officially retired. I'm okay. officially done. Congratulations. Thank you very much. How yes. does it feel to say yeah, I'm retired? Um. You know what? It's 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 it's, it's not so real yet. It's it's just still like you know what I mean. I'm like I get the urge to throw punches <laughs> and train and all that. You know what I'm saying? But I think the most surreal part is that I don't have to be in shape no more. Like I. Finally, gained a little bit of belly. Like sometimes I get a little bit of belly. Like I've never seen this before. Like this like thing? there, you don't even have a belly at all. Either. I, I yeah, know, but you know, no, but for, yeah. for me, yeah. I, I know. Like I can. Like, so it's kind of, it's kind of cool. You know, I'm embracing my fat. You're right. Yeah. Um, that sounds good You're enough. Very body positive. <laughs> he wants yeah. to be a skinny fat person. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> well, it's gotta yeah. be nice to not have such well, a regimented never, life, right? I know. Like, I know. She know. I've never been fat. From nine, 1993, I won the Golden Gloves at 139 pounds. I retired 2019 at 140 pounds. Mm -hmm. So that's one pounds throughout, <laughs> I don't know, 30 right, something right. years. So it's like, yeah. That's pretty much why I can take him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. at the end of the day, I've never been fat. So for me gaining weight now and then getting bigger is kind of cool for me. Yeah, it's yeah. a different, different way of life. Now, yeah. um, before your last fight, you said you didn't want to look back on your career mm -hmm. and, and and your legacy until you were finished. Now right. that you you are officially retired, um, like what do you feel has been your biggest input into boxing, your your legacy when you look back on your career? Consistency. Um, I watch my career and a lot of other fighters' career and the thing I always say with, with me is people understand I'm a six time champion of the world and that's not come from being like undefeated you know what i'm saying i lost and i came back i lost and i came back you know what i'm saying but it just shows the will and the drive of a person i mean like like i'm from brownsville brooklyn and you know what i'm saying i came up from the bottom so you know i mean i'd say everybody has their own story but what helped me out was i'm from brownsville brooklyn i came from the bottom and i realized that i was at the bottom when i started so there was no further down i can mm -hmm. go only thing i can do now is go to the top so just put one foot in front of the other and keep striving for the best. And that's what I did. And that's why, you know, I'm I'm six time champion of the world. Yeah. And Mita, from you, like from your perspective, what do you think would be Zab's legacy? Um, I mean, again, you know, I think he sought out to do what he wanted to do. Um, you know, his he has a whole family of fighters and when you have like a whole bunch of people trying to do the same thing and you manage to make it to the top and you manage to be the one that's the provider mm -hmm. and the one that, you know, actually everyone's going to look back in history and remember. I mean, sometimes you could sit back and say, dang, it's hard for me, but you were chosen to be that person for a reason, mm -hmm. you know, so his legacy um, you know, will be left down in, in history books. I mean, there'll be kids that want to be boxers and that's coming up and people from the, like he said, from his hood where he grew up, that'll be like, dang, you know, if he could do it, I could do mm -hmm. it too. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of kids, obviously your own kids, yeah. what would be, you know, what do you want them to take away from what you've done with your career? Um, just know that daddy was a person that when I fell, I got back up. I never stop trying, you know what I'm saying? Like I always tell my children and I install them to them, you know, you can't win by quitting. You can't win by not achieving, you know what I mean? Like I have a, a child that entered into the military. I have twin boys that's doing acting. I have, you know what I'm saying? My other daughter, um, Zabrea, she's going to the military next year. Wow. So it's like, you know what I mean? I have, I have, you know, my oldest daughter, she got my granddaughter. She's doing successful, she, she's doing well. My youngest son, Zab, he's in editing in school. Okay. In sixth grade already, so oh, so man. I'm I'm you know, 
I just thank God every day, man. I mean, because everything I came came from, came through, seen, God is like, I got better for you, my son. Yeah, so everyone's kind of taking what you did with your career, but in their own different ways own, now, right? Right. That's what I love of my children, because they all have their own lanes. Right. But they have the great, they, they have the daddy and mommy's drive. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty good. I mean, it's great. Like, I, obviously, both of you have been so successful in your different career paths. Yeah. And now, together, and after the break, we're going to talk more about Boxer Wives on Drinks With Thanks. Welcome back to Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks, and I am joined by former six time world boxing champion Zab Judah, who is also producer on the new hit show Boxer Wives, which is uh, cr created, executive produced by Dr. Mita Leacock, also an author uh, extraordinaire. Everyone is just killing every career path <laughs> that they're in right now. I'm like, okay, remember all the different titles. But mm -hmm. um, we talked so much about uh, Zab and your your boxing career, and Mita, of course, with with Boxer Wives now and your production company, your group yes. that like kind of has put this on. Tell me, like, when this idea came to fruition, and sort of like how you were able to get things moving um so we came up with the idea about 10 years ago um a partner that i have me and her we were discussing like you know all these other reality shows are on tv it wasn't a lot at that time 10 years ago but it was substantial mm -hmm. the, the the right ones right and we're like oh hold up why isn't our sport on tv oh no 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 we got to get this moving 10 years ago yeah. so we started you know thinking okay who could we call and I had to think to myself, I don't really have any friends that's boxer wives. It's a single sport. Mm -hmm. So it's not like football or basketball where they have their little, you know, clubs. Yeah, little groups. The, yeah, the stuff, groups yeah. in town and stuff. We all live in different cities, Vegas, uh, Chicago, California, New York, Atlanta. And at any given moment, my boxer could be fighting your boxer so we're really mm -hmm. probably never going to be friends um i may only be friends with his heavyweight friend because he's never going to fight his heavyweight friend so i'll be friends with his right. wife you know but i'm not going to have a bunch of boxer wives so i had to think to myself like okay well how do i get these wives because i don't know them mm -hmm. you know so i was like okay let me call zab hmm, hmm. <laughs> and then and then what happened? <laughs> and he put me in touch um, with a couple people. He, he you know he called a couple of his friends and they put me in touch with their wives and that's like you know how we started to get this going and we were signed to so many production companies over the years and remind you this is ten years ago. Ten mm -hmm. years ago, yeah. we've been signed in in contracts year after year after year and finally last year I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna do this myself. Yeah. Like, I'm going to get a couple of families that are local and shoot something because in the day and age we live in today, people want to see something yeah. rather than hear it. And let's just shoot it and see where it goes from there. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. Yep. Wow. So you just, you know, hired your own production company or um, people yeah, like, I, just to I shoot had a, it? I had a friend that had a production company and he had all the cameras and okay. everything. And I was like, you know, let's just team up. And shoot this. So then, because it's reality TV, and so much of us don't know, like, what goes into reality TV, how much of it is scripted, how much is unscripted, mm -hmm. from your standpoint, like, did you have to come up with storylines? Um, so, pretty much as a producer, what you do is you have conversations with mm -hmm. each cast member, and they're going to give, give away what you would create or stir up. Okay. So, a lot of times... Um, you know, someone will come to you like, oh, could you take that out? Oh, you made me look bad. And it's yeah. like, no, I really wouldn't have had this information or known this if you didn't give it to mm -hmm. me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or what I shoot, I can only cut from what you what you put on camera. Right. I didn't have strings. I didn't tell you what to say. Uh -huh. You said and did everything. I can only cut from it. You know what I'm right. saying? So, um, you know, you have conversations with different people and they may be like, oh, because so-and-so is so-and-so and, -so, and then so i'll go back to my my crew and i'll be like well she's not really doing well with so-and-so mm -hmm. so let's put them in perfect, the room together kind of you, part of it. Yeah, you okay. understand what i'm saying yeah or um 
I'll speak to one of them. Like, what do you think about squashing this between y'all? Then I'll go to the other person. What do you think about squashing it? And you put them in the room thinking that they're going to squash it and they make yeah, it worse. Perfect. Like, you know what Which I'm saying? Is great for you right. Then. So it's just yeah. based on what they have going on. A, m one thing I will say about this show, it was all real. Um, we have a couple, Shaniqua and Monty, that's on there. They're like having, they're married, and they're on and off again marriage, right? Oh, okay. So they, they just tell everything. That's great. Like, yeah. You know, Monty's like, oh, I, I don't even know if I want to be married to her anymore. Shanique was like, well, we're off today, aren't we? Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's it's just the real of, of that's what you go. You got to put work into a marriage, and some days you, you like each other. You always love each other, but some days you don't like each other. Well, it's hard to find people that are that honest and open on camera. Exactly. Right? So... Did you just find people and you're like, no, these are the right ones? Or did you have to go we, through like a whole we casting did, crew? We did in the beginning do a bit of a casting. And, you know, we sat there like, okay, he's too crazy. Um, no. <laughs> he's too crazy. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, they're great. They're going to mesh. You know, you, you start off with a lot more people than you end I'm off sure. with. Because time-wise... Sh showing up to shooting, if we're going to do something all together, everyone has to come. Scheduling. It's... I didn't realize how much work it was on the producer's part. Oh, gosh, yeah. Like, I was like, oh, no, well, next season, <laughs> no, someone else has to do this. Like, I'm not, I'm not doing all this. Because you're in it, and then you're also the I'm producer. I'm in it. Yeah. Then I'm, just, I'm like, okay, you makeup, do you have hair? Is wardrobe okay? Mm -hmm. I have to find a location. I got to get the location cleared. I got to get permits. I got to get you to sign off. I got to make sure everybody in the background. It's just, it just turned well, out to be yeah, more work than I... Yeah, anticipated. Yeah, but it's turned out well. At least you know, got you know, it's now out there. Yes, it's, it's, it's done. It's working. Yes, it's getting. You know, and then really there's your reviews. inner fightings with the with the team. Like, I'm sure. Can you can you add that piece in? No, I don't want that piece in. No, but I think it really needs to be. Well, I don't think it. You know, it's it's just so much mm -hmm. beat in front of and behind the camera right. that a lot of people don't know the real inner workings of what goes on no, to get something out. Don't understand reality <laughs> TV either. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, though there is an interesting storyline between your girlfriend, Sab. Right. Wait a minute, and this is why being a little P is beneficial. <laughs> yeah. you know, I don't have all this work. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's but little P still wants to call shots. Of course, they always little do. Little P wants to call me up, excuse me, little P wants to call me up and be like, Make sure you erase that whole thing that and out. make sure I see everything. And I'm like, no. No, no. wait a minute. I, I wasn't ready. I wasn't yeah. ready. <laughs> and you're like, no, honey. You're like, I'm the ET. Like, that's, yeah. that's going I on. I wasn't ready. <laughs> yeah, so, but, okay. So then on that point, then, yeah. you have your girlfriend on the show, yeah. your yeah. ex-wife's on the show. Yeah. What's that like? So this is pretty cool, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, to some people that... Watching it, they might come off like a little hanky panky and look with the hanky panky mind, like, oh my god, he got his girlfriend currently and his ex wife together. Yeah. And so my ex, so my current girlfriend, she's a body painter. Oh. Body art. And um, my ex wife wanted to get a body painting done. Oh. So they they was put together and you know what I'm saying? I mean She saw me naked. Okay. That's an interesting twist in the, the mm. show. It was on it was in the show. Yeah, it was in the show. It was okay. in the show. This is this is like this So is... like how do you feel about Amita, how do you feel about working with Zeb's girlfriend? Um, I I'm actually the one who suggested oh. that she be on the show, honestly. Um, I thought that it would make for a great dynamic. I don't think that there's um, I'm not gonna say too many. I don't think there's really any reality show that shows uh, the sister wives storyline where you think that we're going to be on the show fighting, but we're mm -hmm. actually the two closest ones on right. the show. Yeah. You know, we, we have lunch together. We have breakfast. You know, our child, you know, gets along with her. Um, she comes to see me without him. She'll call me. Like, you know what I'm saying? How do you get to that, that point? Um, By having a top flight fly ex-husband okay let's you know let's uh this let's is... let me to answer that one. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm... <laughs> can, can, can we erase that from no cut can you just keep cut. going <laughs> that was a good take right there um, and you know i think what it is and you know i've i've i try to explain this to a lot of women when i'm speaking to a lot um to women and i have a book out called contract wife contract mm -hmm. life and um it's basically that emotions clouds vision right mm -hmm. and when you still have an, an emotion for the being or you still want to be with the person or there's still something underlying then that's when you have animosity towards the next female 
Mm -hmm. To me, it's all about security. I'm secure with who I am, and I don't cross boundaries where he's concerned. So if you're his woman, his wife, or whoever you are, you don't ever got to worry about me crossing boundaries. I'm very respectful right. because I know what our relationship is. There's no question in my mind that, oh, maybe we'll be this and maybe we'll be that. I know that I have genuine love for him. He has genuine love for me. We want the best for each other, but we're friends, and that's it. And I think when you know that, then there's nothing that no one else can say, and I can be your friend all day long because... I'm not really, like, I'm not coming for you. <clears throat> that sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers to that. That doesn't sound like no, reality TV just, at all. Just, <laughs> it's like very calm, cool, collected. Right. Yeah, you know? uh, I'm impressed. You just got to worry. I guess it's just Zab then, right? It's like, I, yeah. I think it's really her worry. Okay. I don't have worries because whatever they do is fine for me. If she, he's happy, I'm cool, mm -hmm. you know? I think it's really on her whether she's insecure or she feels yeah. a certain kind of way because of the alpha female or the importance that I may have in his life. Right. I can do my best to make her feel comfortable, but I, you know, you can take yeah, a... it's all about yourself. Say, stick like... and take you to the well, but I can't make you drink. So it's mm -hmm. really about how she feels in her own relationship and how she feels about herself that really mm -hmm. tells, you know, the truth. Well, Zeb, you surround yourself with awesome women, so yes. and now it's and now it's all getting you paid. So <laughs> we'll talk more about that on Drink of Things next. Hey guys, welcome back to Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks, and I'm very thrilled to be joined by former six-time world champion Zab Judah and his ex-wife, but also business partner on the new show Boxer Wives, Dr. Mita Leacock. We've been discussing their relationship, boxing relationships, and just in the break, we were talking about how uh, being around athletes, dating, and Mita, you know, I found it interesting where I've said this before because I've, I've worked with many professional athletes. It's sort of like when you know how the sausage is made, like you right. don't want to eat it. Exactly. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to have a you like, here, but like. It, look, if I have a boyfriend and you're sitting at home, I can't wait to get back to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like you don't have to worry about anything with me being on the road with these guys. Right. Because you, you said you used to represent <laughs> yeah. NFL players. Mm -hmm, a so lot you of, were, what did you do with that? I do sport. I did um, entertainment and sports okay. management. So then I find that you unique because but you were then you were married to an athlete so he was one of my first clients oh okay. so i was in the entertainment business first and then um i started co-managing his career as well and a lot of um i got a lot of my athletes because they seen what i did with him mm -hmm. and they would start to call me like oh could you do that for me could you do this for me and that's how i kind of got into sports management so then it worked perfectly then to work together again because she managed yeah. your career yeah. You'd want to work with her again, right? Yeah, of course. And yeah. marry her, too. I mean, I had nothing to do with his boxing skills, but on yeah. the marketing side, mm. you know, that was my field. That was my right. thing on the outside. How would you describe what, like, what's unique about uh, an athlete relationship? Like, what's it like, you know, from both sides? I mean, because you, you're kind of more than just a girlfriend or a wife at points because you have to take on a lot more. Yeah. yeah. So... I can't say that all wives or girlfriends do it. A lot of them just stay home and take in, you know. Me, I was already in the in the industry, and um, let me let you finish. <laughs> just crunch those. I mean, we offered them, so I mean, we can't really get mad. Um, I was already in the industry at the time. I worked for um, Sean Diddy Combs, mm. um, and so I did a lot. You know, I worked as his right-hand person, and so I was already in the game. So it was easy for me to be like, you know... Anybody that came to me for something in the music world, like, ooh, my boyfriend, he's he's this person. Can you put him in this magazine? Music stuff, not sports related at that time. Right. Can you put him, you know, in this video? Can you shout his name out? Can you do this? And you know, you know, there's a little thing that that says, you know, athletes want to be musicians and musicians want right, to be yeah, athletes. Yes. So all the athletes were coming to me like, oh my god, could you get me in this rap magazine? Could you get me in this? Can you get me in that? And it just, it's like a whole nother world because. The athlete world or the fans in that like boxing, they already know you. Mm -hmm. But now you want the rest of right. the people who like music and who like all this stuff to get to know you. And that's how you become mm -hmm. a household name. Right. And so for me, it was easy because, you know, you take care of the family. You make sure they're good. They travel, all the kids. You make sure that, you know, he's well promoted. He has his endorsements. You sell tickets. 
you know, you just do everything you can because it, it works for the benefit of both of you guys. Right. And then how did you, Zap, go from being working together to then dating and then eventually married? Well, I don't know what she mean by like. No, we were together first. That was. Oh, you're dead together first. At the first. same time. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. okay I don't sorry. know what she mean like wanting to be a rapper or something like that because I'm a rapper too, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I do Here everything, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't Jay Z. You're a rapper. I'm not Jay Z, but I'm ZJ. Okay. Spin around yeah. backwards, baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm not Wait, okay. What, <laughs> what kind of stuff? Uh, what kind of stuff do you do? What you mean? I'm. I'm Give me a little he taste. Does, he does jingles. Spit, yeah, I do. Yeah, actually, I'm. I'm. My time is kind of like. Wanted right now because I gotta oh, I know. Some yeah, jingles. Yeah, I know. You're highly wanted. Okay, well, situation. give me a little taste what the what the jingle scenes like for ZJ. Okay, you ready? You ready? Yeah. yeah okay. You ready? You ready? Yeah. I right, don't I, do the cat in the hat one though. Don't do the cat in the hat one. I I all right, let me see. You know what? I left the other phone with the lyrics. No, no, it. I know you know it. I so know you know it. I'm, I'm here. I'm, yeah. I'm your hype nah, girl, okay? No, no, no. I'm saying, and but I'm the a... other, but the yeah. other, no, but the other phone, no, no, no. All right, I got you, but my other phone with my okay. lyrics is in there. Isn't so, Can't, I'm going to get back free, to this. What about freestyle? Freestyle. Yeah, freestyle. Yeah, freestyle. Freestyle. Off the top of the dome. You know what I'm saying. Off the top of the dome. I'm drinking, I'm drinking drinks with Blink. <laughs> yep. And after straight, this, I'm going home. And then we're gonna go. Gloves. And you're rapping stinks. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh wow. <laughs> yeah. And then goes, we're gonna go down to the rinks. <laughs> right. What do you think? <laughs> right. Yeah. Go down to the rinks. <laughs> and go buy ourselves some minks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and very good. I know he had brain surgery when he was on the spot. Right. Because he had brain surgery. Yeah. There we go. He didn't remember the rap. I think I had brain surgery. That's why I can't remember my rap. Right now, but I I'm think hot. It's pretty good. I also think Look drinks at my name. with blinks also sounds very good as well. Look yeah. at my that name works. is ZJ. ZJ. Backwards from Jay Z. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah. It uh -oh. works. It works. We're gonna lay uh -oh. those tracks down. Uh -oh. New yeah. song boy. on drinks with Banks. We got to take a time out. We'll be back with more <laughs> rapping and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm JSB. We are here on Drinks with Banks. We got former six-time world boxing champion Zab Judah, and we have got the executive producer and star of Boxer Wives, Mita Leacock. And we've been talking about the show. And I just want to know for you guys, like you had the the first series come out, ten years in the making. You got it there. What's next, Mita? Um, you know, we definitely are trying to decide whether we want to take boxers wives boxer wives to the cities like mm. boxer wives miami boxer wives atlanta or do we want to do season two so that's where we're at right now trying she's to very moderate decision. she's very uh like humble and stuff but we're going on the road with this every city get ready if you're in the city mm -hmm. and you box get your lady and let's go to work I think that was a, a great <laughs> casting call. I mean, I, I now want to, like, box. Right. <laughs> Let's go. Um, yeah, could you have, like, female boxers? Yeah. 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 We When we started, we had, like, two female female okay. boxers that were going to be on the show. Well, we but have I, we have one that we eyeing Clarissa Shields. Okay. And we had Aida. Aida, yes. Yeah, so. That's great. Aida Biggs. Mm -hmm. yes. So then, with the model that you've created here, I mean, it's a gold mine because then... It's almost like you find the format and then just like keep plug doing and play, it over right? And over. Like, yep. plug right, and play. Real Housewives. That's yep. kind of what you think. It's like, okay, let's do this. Just keep going. Um, what other sport or like group of people do you think this would be good for? Oh, I like hockey players. Do you? Yes, yeah. because really? I want to tap into because hockey players live a, a, a different, extraordinary life. These guys are rich too. These guys fight too. Mm -hmm. They play a sport too. They're huge athletes too. You know what I mean? But yeah. what's going on in their world? We right. have to find out. Love hockey it. Hockey players, yeah. get ready. What I'm coming you? to a yeah, town we, near we're, you. We're working, on, <laughs> we're working on getting a set of hockey players together right now. Oh, so cool. we're, we're trying to yeah. come out with Ice Wives. Ice Wives. Ice Wives. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Because they're also we going through. You can't tell everything on okay. TV. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. Like, okay, I can mean, write that one down. we did is copyright and stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Don't take that idea. You can't steal it. You can't take it. No stealing. No stealing on the show. Yeah, I mean, I love those ideas, obviously, as a Canadian, as a hockey hockey player myself and um zap from the fighting standpoint Tapping in wait a minute which part of canada uh toronto toronto yeah the six toronto. man i want to move there calgary you do i, I, so I cool. hang out in calgary 
Okay, that's like right. weird. Far it's out. minus forty there right now. I know. No, it's very that's, cold. That's where I like to, to hang out. Cold. I love Toronto. It's so clean. It is. It's I'm like clean. Oh, yeah. It's nice. It's yes. just smaller. It's you know we're big. We're a big Canada show here. But uh, just in terms of the hockey, is that watching guys fight on the ice? Like, mm-hmm. do you? What do you think of that? No, I love it. I love it. I have a couple hockey friend players, and they get busy. Like they come to the gym. Like yo, Zab, show me the uppercut with the hook and bring mm-hmm. it back. And I'm like, but you gotta bring the hook back. Bring the hook and then step around and encounter again mm. so they like oh that's just something new i'm gonna try so. yeah they're gritty there there's a <laughs> there's a lot in there and, and i gotta ask you um okay so first of all if i were to be a fighter like oh. what what kind of fighter do you think i'd be knowing what you know of me now like my personality and stuff so get you a big 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 guy like mike tyson stand behind him pop all the crap and then when a guy comes for you Jump behind Mike. So you're gonna be so good. So I just I just hang out that's, behind Mike Tyson it. and then yeah. bam. Well, start out on the side of him. Oh, you start okay. out side by side and and you uh, you uh, and then when the guy starts coming, jump behind Mike and you good. Uh, okay. You good. It's nothing not to worry about. Not a bad about. strategy. It's not a bad. Um, what do you think? What kind of skill do you think I could take to the rink in terms of fighting? Because I'm a hockey player. Um. Yeah, you know, I mean, we could bring you down to the gym, come down to uh, 59 Malcolm X Boulevard in Brooklyn. That's the boxing gym, Gym okay. X. It's my gym. And we could show you some skills. Wow, okay. I he think I'm He tried to say he showed me some skills. Too, yeah. You know. Okay, one Okay, but one quick one quick <laughs> skill now. If Like, I'm on the ice. Okay, what am I doing? Straight down the middle. Straight down the middle. Like? Like, boom, boom. The one, two. Boom. Oh, wait, see, remember this. People, people, and people that doesn't fight always seem to think that this big cock Pull, pull back is yeah, the stronger no. punch. No, the right down the middle okay. is always gonna hit. You so can drop do it with your mitts. eyes. Drop your Just mitts. No, no, no. Right. Keep the mitts on because the mitts they're, on. they're gonna help you. That, that's an extra boom, boom. That's yeah. You know get, get through the helmet. Right, right. Yeah. So okay. turn it over and then turn the other one over too. Oh, down I the asked middle. a UFC fighter earlier, so now uh-huh. I've got I've got all my information. Yes. <laughs> yes. So that I'll I'll be banned from every rank exactly. in New York. Yes. Why yes. I am gonna yes. be a bo- I'm gonna be a boxer because yes. I'm yes. Gonna, like I'm now Rangers. I'm now being trained. If you see Blink coming into your you better watch out. You see her coming to your stadium. Call security. You, be- you better watch <laughs> out. All right. We got a whole lot more to come on yeah. Drinks with Banks. We'll be back after this. Welcome on back to Drinks with Banks. We've got the stars of Boxer Wives here on the show, Zab Judah and Mita Leacock. And we want to know right now your answers to a couple of these fun, quick hitters. I'm going to ask a question, and then Zab will start with you, and then Mita, you can follow up. So first question, Zab. If you had tickets to any event in the world, where would you go and why? If I had tickets to any event in the world... Where would I go first of all? Just what would what would you want to go to? It's sporting event. It's music. Where do you want to be? Probably music. Like wh- who? What? Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. If I okay. could have the opportunity to go see Michael, Michael. All right, that's gonna be a tough. If I had, one for if us, I had right? an opportunity, I mean, because okay, yeah, you're going yeah. for we're going for we're going for all time favorites, okay, right? All time. Michael Jackson. Okay. Michael Mita, Jackson. what do you want? Um, if I had the chance to be anywhere in the world right now, I would want to be at a spa convention. A spa convention. <laughs> What what does that mean? Like just everything spa, everything zen. Okay, so a spa though. A spa, maybe yeah, just yeah. a spa, not a convention. Like a convention, like a learning a about a massage. Like, like yeah, let's get that damn yeah. massage. Yeah, uh, a retreat. A retreat. That I, that's okay. what I meant. Calgary has a great retreat right you know, now. What? It's you cold. Got the mayor of Calgary. <laughs> you and your <laughs> girlfriend go to Calgary. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you've been to the Stampede, maybe. That's yes, a good place to go to. It's very okay. cold and nice. Yes. Uh, I don't know about nice, but okay. Uh, three childhood idols. Zab, start with you. Three childhood idols. Um, Mike Tyson, Pernell Whitaker, and Marvis Hagler. All boxers, yes. Yes. Wonder Woman. Awesome. Um, Suzanne DePass. Um, and for people who don't know, she is. She was the executive producer. She was a woman. Um, she did the Motown. Uh, she brought... The Jackson Five oh. over to Motown, and um, she did a lot of different movies. Um, and Hoppo herself, Oprah. <laughs> nice, yeah, th- that's those are great. Those guys nailed that. Um, I mean, you can't go wrong. Uh, okay, whether or not you do this, what is your favorite karaoke song, Zeb? Mm, probably um, in my lifetime, Jay Z. Okay. Great. Yeah, one of those songs. You sing it ever? Do you you go to the? Yeah. The, oh, 
Yeah, I mean, like, if we do karaoke, yeah. Yeah, okay. Or, 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 or one of my favorites is uh, Method Man, Mary J. Blige, All I Need. Nice. That's yeah. great, too. Yeah, that's always a good duet song. Okay. And I'm going to go with the hard one. Greatest love of all, Whitney Houston. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Can hit the high notes, eh? Exactly. Uh, we, after I mean, how many drinks? Is this before ooh, drinks or after drinks? I'm going to first take shorty. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. She, I want to hear this. Sober karaoke right here. <laughs> you no! Know. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, man, we're getting all the jams here from here. Yeah, like, if reality TV doesn't work out, yeah, right. you got to get right. a career. Okay, uh, speaking of careers, Zeb, what would you do with your career if you weren't a boxer? Hmm, good question. Um, I don't know. Maybe I would. Uh, maybe they wouldn't have been Bill Gates. Male it gigolo. Been, it would have yeah. been no. Maybe it wouldn't have been Bill Gates. Or it would have been me. Gigolo? Yeah, she she she, she's, she she's knows inside the, she's stuff. She's got the jokes. Oh, she knows inside myself. stuff. Oh, so yeah. it, it potentially is a true she's scoop a, there. Yeah, okay. she's a, <laughs> she's no, I'm pretty. Hanky Panky. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, maybe it's dancing. Or Panky Hanky. Yeah. You know. I'm, surprised you, I'm surprised you still remember it. It's been so long. Oh, what, right? ha what happened? No, I'm just saying it's okay. like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just capitalizing <laughs> off of her answer. You know what I'm saying? All right. Wow. You guys have a unique relationship. As I said. And, uh, uh, Mita, what would you do if you didn't work in media and beyond? I would be Dr. Love. Love therapist. Love therapist, yes, because you're already giving me love right, therapy exactly. in the break. Mm. Um, okay, last one. What movie character you would most want to live the life of, Zeb? A movie character that I would want to live the life of. You already mm. lived the Incredible Hulk life, so. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, people um, want to be me. Hello. Yeah, um... I realize that is a difficult question, I think. That's very difficult. Dr. Especially Evil. In my... I don't know, man. You want to be Dr. Evil, maybe? No. I'm, not, I, I, I'm, I'm a very uh, positive, uplifting person. Austin Powers, then, I guess? That, I was going to say Austin Powers. Yes! Man, Austin you're Powers. my member. friend. Yes, I so, swear I, I was going to say Austin I Powers. I, I knew we were on the same wavelength. <laughs> what okay. about Bond? You think you're Bond. James? Yes. <laughs> James is Okay, James Bond, Austin Powers. <laughs> yes. Also, sort of the same thing, I yes. guess. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, Kinda. awesome. We got to take a quick break. <laughs> we'll be back with more on Drinks with Thanks. <laughs> All right, guys, we've had an awesome time on Drinks with Banks with former six-time world boxing champion Zab Judah and executive producer, star of Boxer Wives, Mita Leacock. You can watch our show on Bossip.com. Check out the episodes. Guys, thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Bottoms up, bitches. Bottoms up. Thank you for having us, man. <laughs> you yeah, already know what time it is.